Kevin, what is this boy's name? This this young man's name? Igby Rigney. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Hey y'all, welcome to Vlogtober Day 13. So today I want to do a recap of The Midnight Club. Now I watched the full season of The Midnight Club and I'm so, I was not impressed. I'm sorry. I don't know what I was expecting, but what I was expecting was what I did not get. Um, it was giving very much so... Uh, what's, what's that? Goosebumps. It was giving me very much so goosebumps vibes. Uh, I was not, I was not, I, I didn't, I didn't get out of it what I thought I was going to get. It was giving very PG-13. I knew that it was a couple people that I recognized now. Real quick, Mark's character, Zach Guilford, he was actually, he played on Good Girls, but he also played on some other stuff. But that's the most recent thing I remember him off of. And then Alanka, I knew I saw that beautiful face someplace before. She was on Black AF on Netflix, which I love that show. She was the... The reasonable one out the bus she was the one that was like y'all stay tripping bring it down so um it wasn't that it was confusing for me it wasn't confusing for me okay so we're doing we're gonna do a recap so the, sh the show was about a bunch of kids who were terminally ill and they went to like a, a hospice for teenagers young adults that are terminally ill so alanka's character was terminally ill she had don't don't give me the line on what she had. She she had some type of cancer. So um, she found out that back in the day, some some lady had went to their to their hospice, and it was some like secret spiritual thing that she did with five sisters. And she left. They like she had. They thought she had ran away, but when she came back, she was healed. So Alanka was like, you know, I'm gonna go there because it's something sacred about that place. It's something special about that place, and I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna get healed. So she got all of this information about the whole uh, place and she came there on a straight up mission to get healed. She's like, I'm not going to get me with cancer. No, I don't want it. I don't want it. And I get that. I get that. Sis was like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to have cancer. Y'all going to be messed up. I'm, I'm, I'm going to cure myself because y'all don't believe in me. So uh, the lady who ran the whole place was Dr. Georgina Stanton. Dr. Georgina Stanton, when I told y'all when I when I talked about episodes one through five, she gave me like some, a, like a creepy type feel. Like she knew more than what she was talking about. She tried to play dumb like she ain't know about nothing about nothing. So um, the whole time she was like, you know what? It's something, it's something more to this place. And I'm going to figure out what's going on with this place. So she was doing a lot of research and stuff like that. I ain't going to tell y'all everything in case y'all want to actually go and watch it. I'm just going to give you like a synopsis, I guess you could say. So she was like, you know, I'm going to figure out everything that I need to do. Or everything that needs to be done and what, what is really to this place. So she ended up meeting a lady named Shasta. So Shasta, at first, now it's going to be a bit of a swallow like Because it's a recap, y'all. What y'all thought a recap was? So Shasta, ain't nothing in here. So Shasta was a lady that she met while she was out. She had went out into the woods and she was like, oh my God, I'm all the way out in the woods. She went out to... to get some water like she wanted to collect some water from like the stream and metal she's like i'm gonna get some of this pure water because this water got something to it and i'm gonna bring it back so she kept saying this symbol around that was like an hourglass and the top part of the hourglass was like full of sand or like it was colored in and then the bottom part was empty so she was like you know it's something to it because i know that all of the women that was in this little coat back in the day that was up that was up in this manor this house that's now a, a hospice i know that they all they all like did stuff they did rituals and stuff under that symbol and so so it was five sisters that was united together and then they were supposed to like cure each other and stuff like that but it was one of the sisters that was like no nah, call me trump baby because i want all the power so she tried to get all the power from everybody and so and, and she tricked them and made them think that it was gonna be sweet like oh no nah, we all gonna be powerful we all gonna get here we all gonna be everything that we need to be but she ended up killing them all because she's like baby it's just me you dummies was dumb enough to believe me because i played it real real cool real real cute and she killed all of them and so they was like oh my god you're horrible you killed everybody. So Alaka was like, I need to figure out how to get this stuff together. So come to find out, Shasta, uh, Samantha Sloan. Yeah, I don't care about her name. I mean, she's a good actress, but it ain't like y'all can be like, oh, Samantha Sloan. I might not even be pronouncing her name correctly. And I apologize, Samantha, if you ever see this by chance. 
So, um, she turned out to be like super crazy and she was actually not on Alonka's side. She made Alonka think that she was with her and everything. She's like, oh no, I can help you do this. I can help you do that. But the whole time, Shasta trying to get back into the manor because Shasta's like, I want to really complete this ritual because I really want to be the powerful one now. So come to find out that the girl who had, um, got cured, I forgot her name. It was julia jane so julia jane was the one that ended up uh that they said had got cured and all of this stuff so shasta had told him she was like you know what you know who i am you know who i am because the whole time the whole reason why lanka went there was because julia jane back in the day was the one that got healed they were saying that julia jane had cancer she was really really sick she had the same kind of cancer like that i like that i think alaka had and so she was like well you know what julia jane got healed so i'm gonna get healed too so the whole time Shasta like, oh, you know, no, I'm Julia Jane. You know who exactly who I am. But she was not the fuck. She was not the fuck. No, she was lying. This was a, a fucking liar. She was trying to get out of the power. Crazy. But you know what? It, I ain't like the cut of her jib either because she was just like way too friendly. And it seemed like every single time she was in the woods, every time Alaka went to the woods, Shasta popped up. And I'm like, well, how you keep popping up? And you like you just coincidentally always popping up in the woods. And so one time she was like, no, I'm on the manor's property i'm on uh the property of the manor where y'all at um and then another time she was like now nah, you on my side now so she brought her to her house like shasta brought her to her house and all this stuff and she's like this is where i live out in the damn woods and stuff and she was making potions with poop y'all poop and she was like no we don't get this out this is just for our consumption because we trying to figure out potions with poop i like it a lot could have did better, but you know what? Sometimes desperation will have you really bypassing a lot of stuff. So, in the midst of all of this, the kids would come together at midnight in the library, and they would come together and, and like, tell, like, scary stories and stuff like that. They would never tell, like, the full story because it was kind of like a chapter-by-chapter chapter thing. Now, real quick, Kevin, his character, Kevin also had um, a cancer. Kevin's character, that's the one that I said was giving Evan Peters. Kevin character was really like spooky like his stories that he was telling I'm like I could really see you doing that sir I could really see you playing a character that do that do that does that now one thing that I did like about the fact that they told the midnight stories even though I really wasn't a fan of the series one thing that I did like about it was each character got to tell a story and they told their story and so by them telling their stories it showed them playing in different roles so like on the show like on the midnight club they all had cancer and some of them had cancer some of them had one boy had aids another one had like brain cancer and so like they was all like terminal so they was all terminally sick but when they told their stories some of them was one of them was like a suicidal rebel another one was a straight up murderer another one was what was another one let me see another one was like this brainiac um scientist who was like it was he was caught between the future and the past so it really showed them playing different roles and i did like that because it's like a lot of them were faces that i've never seen before and they might a lot of them that might be newcomers and so the fact that they allowed them to play other roles within the midnight club it really showed their range so that now i feel like if i was a producer or i was a director and i was watching the series i'm like oh, okay well you know what I, I could see this person playing a role like this because i'm watching them play this role right now and they're playing the role well Kevin, what is this boy's name? This this young man's name? Igby Rigney. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Kevin is what's his name on the Midnight Club. Kevin's character. If that ain't Evan Peters, little brother, because Evan Peters, one thing about him, he gonna play somebody that's gonna kill you. That's one thing about him. He he gonna play somebody that's gonna kill you. And Igby, Igby is Igby is giving that. Igby is definitely giving somebody that could play straight up horror movies type feel. Like he was he was really about that life. He was really about that life. So I really did like that part of it. I liked also that on the Midnight Club, although everybody was terminal, it did show like how possibly like a lot of terminally terminally ill younger kids who might be in a hospice type situation how they actually it's like okay they still do regular stuff they're not just always sitting around sick and can't walk can't talk can't do stuff like that they can still do a lot of the things that a lot of people do they just sometimes they have down days anya i really did like anya's character because anya was like that badass and she was like man fuck all y'all stop talking to me i can do what i want to do i'm anya i'm a badass don't let nobody bully you because if they bully you let me know 
And I really thought that like when they had so they wanted Anya to be cured. Anya was the sickest. She had been around the longest, but she was the sickest. So Anya was like, I do anything. Y'all wanna do the goddamn ritual? Do the ritual on me. Do it on me. Cause I'm the one that's about to be out the door. So they did it on Anya and I promise you, I thought that they did uh, one of the episodes. It seemed like Anya was cured, but in, in the midst of her getting cured, everybody who helped with the ritual, they had died. And like, she was living in like a torment because she's like, you know, I live, but all of my friends that helped me do the ritual, they dad would come to find out. OMG, Anya was like really in her mind. She was really in her mind and Anya was the one that was dying. And she died, y'all. I'm telling that part. This a recap. She died. Y'all ain't gonna know when she died if y'all wanna watch the show because it's a lot of up and down. It was multiple times I thought Anya was out of there. Anya's like, watch this. So I was really like, OMG, I couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe that. So then one of the girls ended up getting cured. Uh, well, she went into remission, I guess you could say, because she still had to go through a lot of stuff. And so Alanka was like, you know what, the ritual worked. And the girl was like, no, she was a real Jesus freak. L that's what she was. She was a Jesus freak. She was really like, God, 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 God. It's like, my God, my God, my God, my God. I don't want to say your God left you for dead, but that's what I was thinking. So anyway, what was her character name? It's a pictures up here that don't have nobody. Sandra was her name. That was her name, Sandra. Sandra was the one that was the straight up Jesus freak. And she was like, gotta heal you, gotta heal you. And they, and they like, shut the fuck up. We are all over here terminally ill in hospice. Where, where, where he at? Where, where, he coming, where he coming to help us out? Because we sick right now. We ain't even taking treatment no more. We're terminal. Like, they're like, we can't do nothing else but make y'all comfortable. So all of this stuff is going on. Like, when I tell y'all, so at the end, kind of found out, Sandra got Dr. Georgina Stanton. She got some shit going on because that same tattoo, like, Alanka had found, like, a whole book of spells and stuff like that because she was finding all kind of clues and shit that J uh, Julia Jane had left at the facility and stuff like that. And so she was like, oh, my God, it's uh, she left these numbers on these portraits that she had made because um, Alanka went and... What did Alanka do? Alanka went and snuck into Georgina Stanton's office and she got Julia Jane's file. So Julia Jane had drew a bunch of these pictures and she had like coded information on it and stuff like that. So Alanka's like, this got something to do with something. So they went into the library and then they went into the roller decks, like the index or whatever in the library. And so when she went to go find a book by a certain number, when she, when she looked at the book, the book had that hourglass on it. So Shasta character also had the hourglass on her wrist. Now, Georgina Stanton did not want her up in there. So when she found out that Alaka was down in the basement trying to do this goddamn ritual and she had Shasta blood, because Shasta told me, I'm Julia Jane. The bitch was not Julia Jane. The fuck she was not. She was not. She was trying to act like she was because she looked very similar to how she probably would look as an adult. But that the fuck was not her. So, um, she went and was like, I can't believe that y'all down there doing this shit. So, Alanka believes her because um she has the character she had the she had the fucking uh hourglass on her but she had the hourglass on her but so she's like omg you you're one of the girls she's like yes you know who i am she's like you're julia jane she's like yes bitch i'm julia jane with your dumb ass no the fuck i'm not so um she did whatever she needed to do to get up in the house that's how bad she wanted that power and she was willing to kill everybody for that power it was crazy so, um, she has to end up bringing her girls. She had brought her, the women that was at her little compound with her because she told Alanka, she like, hey, let me up in there and then I can heal you myself because you wasn't able to do the ritual. But that's probably because you wasn't powerful enough. But I'm powerful enough because I'm one of the extra, I'm actually one of the sisters. And I'm gonna bring my other four sisters, my other four people with me and we're gonna do the ritual again. But what, what Shasta was really trying to do was bring them all together so she could gain all the powers. And she ended up trying to kill the rest of them. She was trying to drink the, drink the potion. And then Alanka dumbass was about to drink the potion. I'm like, this is something she told you had shit in it why would you do that why would you do that so Alanka was really about to drink it and Georgina Santa came down and said she like if I wish I wish the I wish the fuck you would put the cup down with your dumb ass put the cup down and she has to like drink it drink it so right when Alanka was about to drink it all the rest of the four dummies drunk it because they sit up there with Shasta and they're like Shasta gotta be telling the truth because she's our leader and Shasta was like drink it drink it Shasta didn't drink it though Cause she knew what the fuck it was. She knew what it was. Did she ask to drink it? I don't remember. She asked probably had a different cup or something. But the rest of the girls started vomiting and all that stuff right before Alanka drunk. Cause Alanka was about to go against Georgina Santa. Like, man, fuck you, bitch. I already know I'm finna get cured from this because she's Julia Jane, but she was not Julia Jane. And she should have fucking known, cause they never said Julia Jane had a tattoo on her wrist. They never said that. 
They never said that. So anyway, come to pan now. Shasta is the daughter of the actual original girl that was really trying to take that was really trying to have all of the power like up in the group, and she got overthrown by her daughter. She like my own motherfucking daughter. So I really think. The way she said it made it feel like Shasta was actually her daughter and Shasta was like had trying to get back on the compound. But that's that's something different. I, I guess in the next season, like if they do another part to the series, like people actually figure that out. But so Alonka ended up not taking the stuff and Dr. Georgina Stanton ended up calling the uh, police or whatever. The ambulance to take the damn girls. And she was like, okay, the girls are going to live. They had to get their stomach pumps if they're going to live because you basically just drunk some uh, some poopy potion, which are dumb asses. So they drank that potion and all of that stuff. So come to me, and I'm like, y'all was ooh, it was some it was some little cute stuff going on too though. It was real cute. So uh Nat Nasuki, I don't know what I forgot what her name, how they pronounce her name on the show. And Amesh, OMG, they started dating. Because Amesh, Amesh like bucket list was to um kiss a girl and to lose his virginity before he died. And she gave it, she gave him, she gave him that good good. I said, oh, a mess, you got it. And Alonka called him, of course. Like, she ain't catch it, but she came in the room. Like, she was like, it's the midnight time. And, and, and our girl was like, she's like, okay, give me a minute. And so the boy, like, what's going on? And he was in a bed with nothing but his little port. I said, y'all hunching? I can't believe y'all hunching. That's great. So they was, they was like boyfriend and girlfriend and it was like so cute. And then um Kevin and Alonka's character, they liked each other, but Kevin had a girlfriend already and Kevin was like, I'm trying to be true to my girlfriend because she needs me. And Alonka like, man, fuck her because you're fucking sick as hell. And then what's that boy named Spencer was Kevin's roommate and he's like, man, you don't even want to fucking be with her. You really want to be with Alonka. And he's like, but I don't can't live it. He's like, bitch, you're dying. So you really finna, you finna live out the rest of your days trying to please another bitch and she's not gonna die. So when you die, she gonna get her another boyfriend. But when you die, you just gonna be dead. So break up with her so you can actually get with the motherfucker that you want to get with. And Alonka liked him too. But she was like, you know, I, I know, I know homewrecker. So, you know, if, if you want to be with her, you could be with her. I, one thing I'm not about to do is sweat you. That's what Alonka was like. She said, one thing I'm not about to do is sweat you. She ain't never say that, but that was a vibe that she was giving. She like, listen, I know you want me and you know I want you, but I'm not going to sweat you about it. I said, I know that's right. I know that's right, Alonka, because I'm with her on that. So, um, what else happened? So then in the end, y'all... So, um, what's that girl name? Sandra ended up going home because she, she was like basically in remission, but they was telling her like, you still got to do a lot of therapy and stuff like that. Like you got to do chemo and stuff. You basically got to start all over again because we thought you had some type of cancer, but it really wasn't that type of cancer. She was like, it wasn't cause of the, it wasn't cause of the ritual. It was a fluke. And a lot cause like, bitch, I don't really believe it. Cause what are the odds? What are the odds? But now we really don't know. We really got to wait to the, another, to the next season. So then, y'all, at the very end, Dr. Georgina Stanton went into her office and stuff like that. At the end of the day, she was like, oh, my God, these bitches, these fucking crazy-ass kids. This girl don't went into the goddamn basement. Because they done found the basement. So that's a little sad thing. So the basement, so in the portraits that Julia Jane had wrote, she had, like, codes and stuff like that. And so when you got into the elevator, it was like a little that same kind of hourglass thing. And they was like, well, when you press it, it don't do shit. She was like, but if you press so that they would never make it where you could just press it so it had like a little code a little secret way for you to press it to get into the basement and so they that's how they found like the basement the basement part they didn't even know it was there but that's in the basement where everybody did their rituals and stuff like that so um they had got they was all in the basement doing the rituals and all that stuff i'm on backtracking a little bit i'm trying to explain this to you so georgina santa had told Alonka dumb man she said you dumb as fuck because i know she's like how did you get down here because when the elevator go up it's not even a way to call the elevator back down to that floor so yeah which i know this is my facility dumb dumb it's a stairwell on the side that's very well hidden that's why your ass didn't find it because it's not for you it wasn't for you it's for people that know why they be down up in his basement it's not for you so the whole time throughout the whole show alanka was saying like old oh, people scary motherfuckers like bitch i'm, sorry, I'm hungry all of this stuff like she was crazy as hell um anya was saying like shadow people and stuff like that that, that she was like these people coming for me because they know i'm about to die and all of this stuff so come to find out alanka and kevin was the they was actually seeing these like dead people when they were going the hallway the the wallpaper was changing and shit like they was going into another dimension so they take their ass in the motherfucking midnight club they like okay so did any of y'all see this y'all seeing this shit and they like no we ain't never seen none of the stuff that y'all saying you bitches is crazy 
You motherfuckers is crazy because that ain't really happening. Y'all not going in the hallway and the wallpaper changing. It's different. Y'all in a different dimension. Y'all in a different part of the of time. And it's all these old people running around and stuff like that. Like, that's not what's happening. You're crazy. And they like, uh, Alonka and Kevin, like, we're not crazy. We're we saying the same thing. So you talking about both of us crazy. And they like, yeah, both of y'all are crazy. So at the end of it, once everything simmered down and all that stuff, Georgina Stanton went into her room and she was just like, these motherfucking kids, I cannot. Georgina Stanton take her wig off. Couldn't find out this bitch is bald. I was like, she had alopecia. I was like, she had alopecia. But then they pan around to the back of her. Guess she had on the back of her head, on, on the back of her neck, y'all. Guess. She had that motherfucking hourglass that was on that goddamn book that she said that she ain't no shit about and told Alonka to forget about. So now I'm like, bitch, you part of it. Who, who is you? Who is you? Come in. It's given she knew the whole time, but she was lying to everybody because she got she got something to do with it. She might be the re she might be the original person that really got all the power and she got that whole house for the rest of the people. So it's really given what's happening in season two. I wasn't really a fan of it, but just to figure out what's going on with her, I probably will catch it again. But I don't know, y'all. So that's really what happened at the Midnight Club. I'm leaving some stuff out because it was a lot of stuff that was going on. But all in all, I like it. It seemed like it's more interesting than what I'm saying, but it was kind of dragging. It was giving goosebumps, and I ain't never been a fan of goosebumps.